Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars, the podcast that blends the modern scooter lifestyle with a twist of the paranormal over a cool cocktail. So here we are, (laughs) Chasing Ghosts Season 1, Episode 5. Five already? Yes. Um, I, I do want to bring up what we probably haven't done enough of in the last couple of podcasts, and that is we need reviews, ratings uh, on iTunes, uh, Google Music, uh, any place that you're listening to this and, and your comments so that we can get better. We need your help out there. The uh, the thing is, hopefully we sound a little better. We've up, uh, upgraded our studio. We put in sound d- uh, deafening d- devices, well, moving blankets. Well, you're reinvesting into the program. You've taken the profits from our show and, and put it back into the feed, so that's impressive. Right. I think uh, we're only into this thing about $1,000 now. Um, I did get my first celebrity endorsement, though, uh, but recently when I got my hair cut. Whoa. The really? uh, yep, that's right. And a shout out to Fashion Hair and Lori Joyce. She gave me a bottle of um, saline uh, hair stuff to put on after I wear my helmet. So you spray this stuff on. You got a helmet head. It's called Rough Me Up. Ooh, yes, sexy. So uh, anyway, it was sixteen dollar value. Well, your so hair looks great. Yeah, thank you. She does a nice job. Um, today, uh, we also want to remind people that uh, while we talk about drinking, and, and in fact, we're having a fresh squeezed uh, cocktail right now, um, we do not uh, endorse at all uh, drinking and driving scooters. Well, no, it's illegal and unsafe. And we we keep our drinks to uh, one or less per hour uh, in order to keep keep That's ourselves right. uh, in good shape. But it, it I think we make a bigger deal out of it than it really is because... Uh, yeah, it's it's overrated. Who wants, who wants to drink on a Sunday afternoon well, or Saturday speaking, or Tuesday? Speak, or right. Whatever. And and a few weeks ago, I did something new. What's that? A virtual scoot. What? Yes. Tell uh, me more. Well, I, I nobody was available to go with me for a little ride for a happy hour scooter ride, except my friend, Keith Wombled, ah. Pandemonio. From Sacramento. From Sacramento. He said, I can go. And I go, well, that's not going to work out very good, Keith. I mean, we're we're 800 miles apart. Right, that's not going to work well. But then we got creative, so we both got our uh, our our iPhones out, and uh, we we said, "Okay, we're both going to leave at this certain time," and we did. He he drove down there. I drove up here in the in the uh, Seattle Tacoma area. He's down in Sacramento. I said, "In twenty minutes, I'll be at Jersey Sports Bar." And uh, he said, "Okay, that's about. I'll be at the Purple Place." And he took his scooter. He took his scooter. I took my scooter. He took a date. I was by myself. Wow. It was very cold. But uh, we got to the bar. We FaceTimed at the bar. Uh, both, really? Yeah. That's and pretty impressive. Had a beer. And he goes, I go, well, that's it. It's cold. I'm going to head back. And he goes, no, no. We're on a, we're on a pub, little mini pub scoop. <laughs> so I had to go to it. I went down to the right spot. I even got a picture. Whoa. Went down there. Got back on Facebook with him. He was at his uh, second spot. And I had my Sunday afternoon scoot in a virtual world. That's commitment. That's I, impressive. I don't know anybody else doing that. I think we're cutting edge. Well, you certainly are. You've been known to be cutting edge on a lot of things. Well, uh, speaking of cutting edge, we're actually going to talk about um, uh, Georgetown, which is a really cool area of Seattle. Oh, not Washington, D.C. No, no. Georgetown, it uh, sits at the north end of Boeing Field, uh, King County Airport. It's a super old industrial area where the old Rainier Brewery was founded, which was a different Seattle brewery or which something. Which you can see from my 5 Right, and uh, from the 1880s, and and now this whole area um, has now has the Georgetown Brewery, which makes Manny's and a whole bunch of others, uh, uh, Lucille and a bunch of other I've beers. Heard, yeah, I've heard of those. Uh, very popular. The Charles Smith Winery. Uh, there's art and glass galleries. There's a there's even a circus school there where they teach you wow how to be uh, a trapeze artist. I guess walking uh, the tightrope. A lot of eclectic restaurants and bars, and and uh, also Seattle Vespa. Is there in that? They just moved back. I'm not real happy with them. Well, you know what? They're going to be a sponsor, so be nice. Okay. Um, So they're back in their new place on Airport Way. They just didn't have a filter. A a filter that you needed for your uh, Aprilia. uh, Aprilia. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, so we park our 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 scooters at the uh, Vespa store, and we uh, we walked um, our way uh, a little walking tour around Georgetown. Yeah, it was a nice. It was well. It was kind of a cold day. We dressed for the weather, but our hands were 
Yeah, they got pretty nippy. very cool. And yeah. I wore double gloves, um, but my my scoot ran great. Well, you're a little bit more of a woman than I am. <laughs> Uh, my my and I got a new tire put on. I got an oil change, a full service, uh, and then we spent a little time in this historic area of Seattle. Right, and it's it's pretty small and quaint, but it is old. It's classic. Brick, well, the, the road's brick. very narrow. It's in the shadow of I five, like you mentioned, in a very industrial and historic uh, spot. Um, it's on the east side of Airport Way, where um, our east side of the freeway on Airport Way, and there's old brick manufacturing and breweries, and and it's it's the kind of brick that people are paying a ton of money now for that that beautiful um, uh, aged uh, brick. I right, mean, it just looks classic great. look. But I, I think a lot of people don't even know it's there unless you you're a local or a hipster. I, well, yeah, <laughs> that that'll do it. Um, uh, kick there where you can walk in glass that's mostly covered because you need a bar dark. Uh, and it's pretty pretty attractive area for me be, with that that warm boozy dark environment. You um, lit right up when you uh, saw the dark and dim. Uh, yes, where <laughs> and then you got lit. Uh, you know, I just love a great <laughs> bar. Um, here's what the Seattle Weekly Laura Cassidy said uh, about that area: uh, creatively employing the open, airy, brick-walled spaces left behind by industry and manufacturing, and augmenting them with local art and 20th century detritus. Dit- Trius. Oh, she's good, minus the oh, bouquet man, there at the I, end. I should not have had that last drink. Georgetown's <laughs> merchants consistently fashion warm, imaginative interiors, places you want to visit and never want to leave. Just walking through the streets, you witness post-squat industrial bohemian chic. Chic? Chic. But oh, post-squat, that, that reminds it's me to Sunday wash after. my hands. <laughs> Um, when we went down there, we were going to target two places. Jules May Saloon, which they like to say is one of the oldest bars in, in mm-hmm. Seattle, which it is. But some people say the oldest bar. We're going we're gonna, to uh, talk about that later. And Calamity Jane's, which is now known as Flying Squirrel Pizza. Both are documented as haunted places, uh, both from the owners and online. In fact, uh, King Five did a story on them. And then later we have a, a great interview uh, with a blogger named Peter Andrzejewski. He's the author of SeattleBars.com. Org, uh, a, a terrific resource for all things bars in Seattle, both historical and current. In fact, uh, um, just in the last few days, I've seen him post uh, some uh, stuff about Tacoma. He went to the newly reopened Goldfish. I saw oh, that. I did not see that. But I know you've uh, you worked hard at getting a connection with him. He uh, he's uh, and he's also loves uh, New Orleans. He he has a whole section on New Orleans bars. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you didn't invite us into the interview portion of your process there you made us sit at the bar while you interviewed you seem to be just fine well we were fine but it hurt just a little bit the fact that you bogarted the interview (laughs) process and wouldn't let us in i did even though we're a team you say it's all us part of this but you just took that on your own and said you guys stay over there and i'm going to do the interview He's been to over 3,100 bars. Don't change the subject. <laughs> All right. So on the next one, in fact, I did invite you in. Uh, we'll have another interview with uh, a, another piece of history. Can't wait to see that. His name, is, here. His name is Jeff Carlson. I've heard of him. He's going to tell us about the Calaveras County Monster. You know, we were in Northern oh. California. So we were right in that area. And I think it's appropriate, uh, even though this pub scoot's about Georgetown, that we pull one more story out of California. And, and Jeff who is my stepbrother, is the first guy that got me interested in the paranormal. So that's where it all started. It, well, it's Jeff's fault. It is. It is Jeff's fault. And uh, he's he, he'll be a great source for us because he's been uh, he's been haunted his whole life. <laughs> well, <laughs> can't wait to hear that then. <laughs> so uh, with that, um, do you want to start with Jeff or should we go with Peter? You yeah. know what? Let's let's start with Peter since I, it was a Georgetown day. Right. We'll stick with Peter and then bring Jeff kind of wrap it around to the beginning where you got started with all this. That'd be we'll great. We'll end the show with that. And uh, in, in the in the middle of that, I am going to go back to Georgetown and get one more uh, story from some somebody down in that area that's had an experience. Well, there's a lot of foot traffic. There is. On the day we were down there. All right. Well, here's uh, here's here's Peter and I at uh, Jules May Saloon for him to uh, pull the covers back and show us what that bar is all about. Well, I'm glad I finally see something because we weren't invited to that interview. <laughs> Okay, I'm uh, with Pete Andrzejewski, who is the author of Seattle 
spars.org. Is that correct? It is. And uh, you, it, it, it's quite an amazing website that you have, a blog that you have that has multiple offshoots of Seattle's oldest bars. What are some of the other ones? Um, so I have a few hobbies. One is just going to as many bars as I can, different bars as I can go to. The number 2,500 I saw. Uh, so, in, so now it's 3,180? That's unbelievable. 3,100 bars. Yeah, everywhere. Right. And about uh, a little less than half of those in the Seattle area. So you probably have your own top 10 list, and you categorize those as well. So there's probably a top 50. But um, what are some of the bars that, that you've gone to? And let's keep this more in the classic or dive variety. Mm-hmm. What, how, for you, Pete, what are the what are the top ten? So that's a really hard question for me. I do have a page of my favorites that, again, is kind of half kept up <laughs> um, because they're so different, right? That is, um, we're sitting in definitely one of my favorites here in Jules Mays. Um, I love this bar because it's just so feels feels like a pre-prohibition bar, right? and uh, and it is really old. Um, but like the Five Point, I love the Five Point. It's one of my favorite dives. Love a good cocktail bar, you know. So anything. There's so many now. There weren't a few years ago when I started my project, but at Canon and, and those places. Um, any place with character and a really different sort of feel, I like. And I read on your blog that you try to go to a new bar or a bar a day. Is that correct? Yeah, I might be uh, giving up on that now. <laughs> um, but for several years, I would average almost exactly one new bar a day. So we do we do our bars on scooters, and you know we look for classic pubs, um, dive bars, haunted haunted taverns, which is mm-hmm. one of the reasons that we're in Jules Maze. Is it? It's a it's known to be haunted. It's published online and elsewhere where people have come in. But uh, we make a real effort only to have one drink per um, hour or so, but we go on multi-day runs. Do you uh, keep an eye on that? Do you you say, well, heck, I'm going to go to this this many bars. How do you limit that for yourself? Usually it's a pretty pedestrian thing. Um, I'll go to, uh, you know, I'll I'll go out to dinner and I'll just look for a bar bar I haven't been to yet and have a drink for dinner. Right. and uh, maybe, so maybe one or two, um, and a lot, you know, a few nights I won't go any new place. And then every now and then we'll uh, be staying um, uh, in uh, like New Orleans or Scottsdale or someplace where I can walk to a million different bars. And then I get a bunch in really fast. We we, right? we all get, we all love the walking the walking tour. I'm on one today here in Georgetown. Yeah, excellent. So yeah, and then um, uh, when we're we we'll often be driving around the Northwest and. Usually with my girlfriend, and, and we usually have a bunch of stuff stacked in between. So like, a, we'll go to parks, we'll, we'll go on a little hike, maybe we'll go. A lot of times, I'll try and go to the local historical society and find if I see if I can find some old city guides that'll help me with bar history and so on. So um, we'll usually have one drink in each place and plenty of time between each. If they get squeezed together, um, then my girlfriend doesn't drink. Uh, you know, she'll have a drink of the first one or two, and. And if, uh, so if, if there are several really close together, uh, she'll take over the driving. Well, I saw her raise her hand earlier when we were uh, talking about, well, what do you do when we when you get to that point? It's rare. Yeah, it's pretty rare when you do that. Also, I just bought, for fun, I actually just bought a, um, a blood alcohol uh, uh, keep, tester. Keep it on your keychain and put it in your phone? Just put it in my trunk, and it's more for wagering. Like if, <laughs> if we're, It's more fun if you're... If, if you're, you know, just can walk, do one of those right. walking tours, and then you guess, you know, and you see how good your sense of, uh, of uh, how much you've had it. But, you know, when we're driving, I, I never get even close. Right? Who, who wants to go through that? Yeah. Nobody does. So, um, so we here we are at Jules Maze. Uh, it's a Saturday afternoon. It's plenty busy. In fact, the whole town, uh, the whole Georgetown area has people walking up and down the streets in, in late February. Uh, uh, I read, I've read, and, and I think people will confirm that this area is super historical, and everything is haunted in in, yeah. in Georgetown. So we pick we pick this because um, of both of our affinity to this bar, which we I think we both like. But you've done some research uh, on Jules Mays, and 
And maybe we could start with the man. Who was he? Yeah, well, he became a, a really popular guy in the area, right? Some people called him the mayor of uh, Georgetown. He wasn't officially, but just because of his character. And when he died, he, they say he had a ton of IOUs from people he'd loaned money, and it showed how much he helped out and so on. But with this bar, um, he only he actually only ran this bar for a year before he died. Uh, but he ran bar, other bars in the area. So he um, immigrated from uh, Belgium, 1892, and uh, he, he's in Seattle by 1902. Um, and by then, we find him in city directories. He's working um, in South Park, just south of here, for a guy. Uh, and w within like 1903, 1904, he's listed as the owner, or the co-owner, along with that fellow of, of the place. Um, then in 1905, he goes back to Belgium, gets married, brings his wife back the next year, and he bought, um, uh, just by himself, he bought the Maple Leaf Bar, which is a... It used to be a little north of here. It no longer exists. And, uh, My next question is... Yeah. Um, and uh, then he owned that for, for a while and then came down to Georgetown um, in 1906, 7, around there, if I recall correctly, and, and uh, started the uh, Rainier Bar. And that was about two blocks south of where we are now. Near Smarty Pants or right in there? Even a little north of that. So like two buildings from us, the building's no longer there. Right. Okay. Later, that's the building that later became the Georgetown Tavern for years and years and years. So by the by 1940, it's the Georgetown Tavern, and it stayed the Georgetown Tavern until into the 1990s. Um, but for Mays, he stayed there uh, until Prohibition, kept running it during Prohibition as a pool hall and restaurant. Um, and uh, that's actually when he changed the name to Jules Mays, is, is uh, when it, during Prohibition it became Jules Mays. Um, and then um, as soon as Prohibition was over, he got one of the first licenses, he could start selling beer again. In 1936, they said they had a, a, some fire damage, that might have been the reason that he moved here. So he, he leased uh, the current Jules Mays building in 1936, had his bar running here in 1937. And later in 1937, he died. Did he, um, did he get murdered? Did he um, die of natural causes? I have no idea if there's a good story. If he had all those him. IOUs, that somebody may have taken him out. Yeah, there's enough <laughs> There's enough crazy activity down in this part of, of town at the time that who knows. Just, just recently, there was something that happened down here. I, I read it was... Well, yeah, back in the pre-prohibition days, or right when you know we started back up, it was so raucous down here. And for a while, this area uh, had uh, had uh, uh, bars that could be open when bars in Seattle could not before it was, it was annexed. Annexed, yeah. And so uh, it was really rocking then because the bars, the people would come up from all over. And Seattle was south of here as well as north of here, and uh, they had like 13 saloons here. I love that. Um, so, so this building then has had a, a various different businesses in it, and that's right. So this was built in 1898. Um, it uh, first became a, um, a saloon in 1907, and it had different businesses. It seems to have stayed some kind of bar until Prohibition, um, and uh, had restaurants, hardware store, all kinds of things. Um, the back room, which I also love, is, um, had all kinds of things too, especially when it's a bar. They had smokers, the boxing matches, they, oh, nice. it, was a, it was a card room where they would play pharaoh, you know, and, and poker, and, and uh, uh, gambling on the horses, um, and uh, uh, all kinds of stuff going on uh, back there. And uh, upstairs they've had all kinds of stuff too, the Georgetown Gazette published from up there for a while, they had pigeon races at one time up there. And so later, I don't know exactly when, it was converted into apartments. And I think now it's just one big apartment. I'm not sure of that, but uh, it's been that way for quite a while. So, yeah, Mays moves in here. 
between 1936 and, and 1937. He passes away. Uh, his wife continues to run it along with his younger brother, uh, Valentine Mays, for uh, for several years. Um, kind of lose track of it in the, in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Um, it doesn't appear in under bars in the in the city guides, like the Pulp City guides, but it does appear under restaurants. So I'm not sure how much of a bar it was, but they did have one of the first liquor licenses. For anybody that's listening to this, we want to go to seattlebars.org, but maybe you could talk about a couple other places they could go of your blogs that might um, give them some insight. Yeah, sure. So um, if you go to seattlebars.org, or with the, on your computer or large device, you'll 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 see links to most of the other pages. Um, if you go on your phone, uh, it won't show you those. But um, uh, and also in Seattle, I've got a really good handle on what bars exist, and so I I'm very highly confident in my list. Um, and other people post lists, and frankly, I have to correct them. <laughs> I love the, um, I love the corrections. <laughs> Yeah, but um, you know, if you go to the primary sources, it's easy to see. Uh, but but um, um, then oldest bars in the state of Washington. There's probably still some surprises out there. We're not done with you. We're going to pull you into another podcast online if you'll let us. Yeah. Oh, uh, and what a great resource and, and uh, enjoyable conversation. So Pete Andrzejewski. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Seattlebars.org and his uh, beautiful girlfriend Trista. Yeah, thank you. So if you have any hints for things I may have missed, go to the site, drop me an email, please. I will. I found you on there. All right, yeah. perfect. Well, that was really good stuff by Peter there uh, in the interview. And remember, you can find all his stuff at seattlebars.org, and you can branch out into other areas of his extensive bar research, uh, which is it's just wonderful stuff. It's amazing. Um, I'll post his info on our website and on our Facebook page, which is Chasing Ghosts on Scooters and Bars or at Chasing Ghost Pod. So uh, please like us, uh, share our podcast like many of you have done, and we really appreciate it. We're also on iTunes, Google Music, Libsyn, and some places I've never heard of it. Just sort of show it up there, which is kind of cool. You've got us in all kinds of nooks and crannies out there. <laughs> yeah, if you learned how to use a computer, you might even find out what those are. <laughs> huh. At least use it for what you normally do. <laughs> I'm pretty content where I'm at with it. If you just search scooters, ghosts, and bars, we're, we're really about the only thing that shows up. We mm. we do have a unique uh, niche corner of the market in the market, and uh, and if you're a scooter rider that's had a paranormal experience, please share it with us. Go to chasingghost.net and click the submit button. Look who walked in. The lizard. He rode his scooter. Glad to be back. You are back. Uh, you've joined us today for more Scooter Talk. I did. I just uh, rode down from Burien and down through Des Moines and Redondo, Federal Way. Sun was out. It was a great day to be on my scooter. How'd the Harley riders treat you? Well, you know, <laughs> most most often they they see me coming. <laughs> and uh, they don't like to acknowledge us, us scooter riders, but that's okay. They look the other way. Yeah. Yeah, I notice they don't even do the motorcycle wave yeah, most of the time. That's okay. Yeah, they get taught to only wave to other Harley riders <laughs> or a dentist. <laughs> do the same thing. You know, we've had only what, eight days without rain for the last, what, how many months? Two plus months. It's been horrible. It has been, and I'm looking forward to a turn here pretty quick. Well, you, you took things in your own hand or handle bars. I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Blizzard. Um, Earlier, I mentioned that uh, uh, in the podcast that Georgetown was on the east side of I-5, but I really meant the west side. Maybe you're just heading the wrong direc uh, direction on I-5 originally. Uh, maybe that's what it is. But I've self-corrected. There's no need to contact me on Facebook or anywhere else to say, Mark, you're an idiot. It's on the west side of I-5. And also, in episode four, I said that uh, a town in California was Cooperopolis, but it's actually Copperopolis. And, and that was another listener that caught, caught that mistake oh. and made me feel like an idiot. What well, was honest? You're, you have a son named Cooper. I do. I just, and so do you, by the I way. I do, yeah. <laughs> Odd. Um, I, and also, in, in episode four, we said that this episode five would be about a Tacoma bar that we actually have our eye on. But uh, Georgetown got in the way. You seem to be making up quite a bit of material. Well, I'm not making it up. I'm correcting it. <laughs> 
And uh, so today we're finishing up season one, episode five of Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars. And we'll be chatting uh, with Vanessa. She's the co-owner of Jules Mays Saloon, the one that Pete Andrzejewski was talking about just a few minutes ago. And then we'll follow up that with Claire, who uh, who is a bartender there of her own experience in, in Jules Mays. And this is another interview that we were not a part of, I think. Well, here's a lot happens. Uh, Behind the scenes? Um, yeah, behind the scenes on this podcast. While you guys are working and doing all your things, I'm I'm putting together notes, I'm doing research, I'm I'm doing the editing, I'm doing all the social media, I'm doing the website. I mean, there's there are things, Mark, that you just don't realize we that have, are going. We have worked really hard to put this thing together. <laughs> <laughs> I have to I have to call you and say, hey, would you mind downloading the episode and listening to it? I'm getting there. <laughs> all right. You've turned into a a, a, a maven of uh, podcasts these yeah. days. I'm pretty impressed with myself. All right, let's get back to Vanessa and uh, and Jules Mays. So hi, I'm uh, I'm at Jules Mays with Vanessa, one of the co-owners of of the bar. And hello, and you have more than one bar. We do. We have uh, the Tin Hat in Ballard on 65th Street. Great place. That was our first bar. We've had that for um, almost 15 years now. We've been here for 11 years at Jules Mays. And uh, we just opened our third location in White Center a year and a half ago. And that's called, been getting good press. Yeah, called what? Noble Barton. Noble Barton, yeah. that's right. And that was my great granddad's name. So uh, that's where it's the a name comes from. Great so. name. Yeah. And we are specifically here, though, in Jules Mays because uh, earlier I came to this area. Georgetown is just known, it's a very historical area and it's known for a lot of things. And in fact, I read online where it said every building is haunted in yeah. Georgetown, but specifically Jules Mays is. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the story goes, of course, we've got, you know, a yoga studio and apartment building up above. But back in the day, those were rooms, you know, for ladies of the night, things like that. This was kind of a boom town down here. There were bars everywhere. It was just crazy. Um, the railroad tracks were here. The brewery was here. So just tons of people. Lots of single guys, lots of crazy. It was the Wild West, for sort sure. Sort of like now. Again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it hasn't changed that much over the years. Um, so, obviously, lots of stuff went on in those days. You know, people getting in fights and being killed and things like that. So, naturally, I think that's probably why it's a hotbed for hauntings, really. Mm. You know? Um, so... Jules Mays in particular, I haven't had any experiences personally, but I know a lot of the staff has. Um, in fact, just probably a month or two ago, my bar supervisor, Shelby, came to me and said, I saw the ghost. Oh. And I was like, what? And she goes, yeah. And it was in the middle of a busy night. And the general description of the main ghost that haunts Jules Mays is she's a woman. She always wears a long, dark dress, long, dark hair. She kind of hangs out over by the ladies' room corner. And she doesn't do much. She kind of just wanders through and goes out the front door, generally. Um, and Shelby was working, and it was kind of a busy night. And she said she looked out of the corner of her eye and saw a woman sitting at one of the bench tables by herself. And, oh, I need to go talk to her. And so she went and did some stuff. And she, out of the corner of her eye, she saw the woman get up and walk out the front door. Was, and she said to some regulars, did you, did you just see a woman sitting there? And they said, yeah, there was a woman sitting there. She just got up and left. And... We all just, they just, for some reason, knew that uh, that was the ghost. Wow, how you cool. Know? And uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, and in fact, Claire, who's working today, she hasn't been with us for very long, a few months now, but she swears she hears a man calling her name. She'll be, and it's always coming from the same place, kind of right between the bar and the kitchen. She'll be out in the dining room and she'll hear, Claire! And she'll turn around and look and there won't be anybody there. And she's working today. Yeah. I may track her down. <laughs> I told her and she said, no, no, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. But um, yeah, she's like, yeah, I can feel it. You can feel that there's something going on here. Yeah. And most of the staff agrees. Fun. So nobody likes to be here alone at night, <laughs> you know, so people always, you know, clothes in pairs and stuff like that. Does so. anybody go in the basement by themselves? No, there isn't really a basement here. It's just a crawl space. Oh, okay. So the only people that I've known that have been down there were exterminators and stuff. It's just kind of a big empty space. Right. But that's where they found a lot of artifacts, like a lot of our old bottles and stuff came from down there. Right. And I think that's where they would like roll product in from the railroad tracks or something. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, yeah. But nobody hangs out down there. No. 
Well, I go well Vanessa, there. thank you. Yeah, and no great, problem. Great stuff. And yeah. I'll, I'll give Claire one shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See yeah. if we can get her yeah. to talk. Yeah, and yeah. She hears, she hears her ghost calling her name a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> so, one more time. Give mm -hmm. us your three bars. The Tin Hat, Jules Maze Saloon, and Noble Barton. And are the other ones haunted? Not that I know of. All right, so we're at the right spot. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah, you're Appreciate welcome. It. Well, um, Vanessa, Vanessa did a good job. Very interesting. Glad I heard it for the first time. I think we need to get on our hogs, our scooters, and and uh, head up to West Seattle. No doubt. Or the or the tin tin hat up in Ballard. Well, yeah. Compare the bars, see how the uh, the flavor is. Plenty of research yet to be done. Yes, much research. So um, I had to spend a few minutes uh, at the Jules Maze Bar, which is beautiful, by the way, uh, chatting with several of the staff before Claire finally poked her head up and said she was not going to go on camera. Wow. So I explained it was a simple um, Tascam DR40 four-track digital audio recorder <laughs> and not a camera. And uh, so still... She must have said yes then. No, she said, <laughs> she said no. But she did continue to make delicious drinks for the bustling clientele. Mm. Um, so I, I pulled up the old sales guy in me. Lonnie, you're a sales guy. Well, I've sold a nut or bolt or two in my, <laughs> in my life. And... Uh, I asked her just one more time, which is what I tell our sales crew, you just keep asking until they answer the right way you want. You know, it's the way it works. So you're a broker. I did. <laughs> uh, and and so here is Claire from Jules Mays Saloon and her ongoing... Hey, before we get into, into her, um, why do you think she was so hesitant? Well, mean, you were, we weren't there. You were there. You went rogue on us. I why did. do you think uh, she was so reluctant? Well, I think that, um, you know, a lot of people are uh, reluctant to talk about a paranormal experience because they get ca they get judged. I think that's part of it. Um, I can't imagine it was me. <laughs> but let's hear Claire at this point uh, tell us about her. On, and then we'll, we'll dissect it okay. after that. Yeah. So here's Claire. So I'm with Claire. You're, uh, you're the bartender tonight here at Jules Mates. Yes, I am. And you um, have had some experience. You've been a little shy about talking to us. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about what you do and then what happens. Well, it's always during um, when we're busy and there's like we're at least halfway full. And um, I'll hear a man's voice call my name. And I look and it's always like in a corner of the bar where there's nobody standing there. But there's nothing more. It's just very loud and clear, clear. And then I look and there's nobody there. So he gets your attention. Yeah. And it's is it the same voice? Yeah. So yeah. different people are there, but the same voice talks to you? Yeah. How many yeah. times do you think that's happened? Probably at least five. Wow. I think it's been often. Did you ever, does it ever feel, give you a little chill or? Not really, but it's like, I can tell it's like 30 feet away from me. Like, I know exactly where the voice came from, but there's nobody there. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. You're lucky to have that happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do I get quarters now? Well, thank you, Claire. Thank you um, so much. That is, it's a short but great story because it really <laughs> happened to you. It did. Yeah. 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 I mean, it happens often enough. It'll probably happen more. If it happens tonight, will you let me know? Sure. All right. Will do. So I'm with Claire at Jules Maze, and I'm going to let her get back to work because happy hour is starting. Yep. Thank you, Mark. Thanks. Claire. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that hey, in there. Did you give her a big hug at the end? It's like she ran out of air. <laughs> no. Claire ran out of air? Yeah. Well, somewhere in there. <laughs> she... Um, it, it, she was really fun, and, uh, and and she really did not, or said she didn't want to do it, but she warmed right up to the whole process once we sat down. Well, you're a top-notch salesman. You do oh. have a way of making women warm up. Oh yeah, I don't. I think I was invisible as the old oh, guy with no. gray hair. Um, we, we we see you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so have you tried the other side? <laughs> <laughs> One time in college. <laughs> so um, what didn't happen on this trip, guys, is is the flying squirrel. The Calamity Janes. No, but we heard some airplanes taken off in the uh, previous interview. You did, because we're on the north end of Boeing Field in Georgetown there, and it sounded like... Well, west of the freeway. West of the freeway. Um, but I, we had promised we were going to go into uh, Calamity Janes, the Flying Squirrel Pizza, and yeah. uh, we were just unable to connect with them. Another lie on 
chasing ghosts. It was a prom- <laughs> unfulfilled bars, promise. On scooters. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we plan a future ride into Georgetown and uh, and do an episode on them if they'll talk to us. And uh, enough of Georgetown. I think we don't need to talk about it anymore. I got my scooter service. I think that's serviced. a wrap. We're on to we episode didn't. six. Well, it's it's not quite a wrap, Mark. What, what do you mean by that? Well, earlier we had promised uh, Jeff Carlson was going to tell the story of the Calaveras County Monster. That's but right. Yeah. Unfortunately, this uh, this podcast, with all its interesting interviews, uh, has run a little long. Georgetown's always been a little long in the tooth. <laughs> so we're going to uh, do a bonus episode right after this one with Jeff Carlson doing the Calaveras County Monster in a standalone piece. Wow, our first bonus feature. Uh, I, I, yeah, it'll be shorter. It'll be a little bit fun, a little bit off topic for us. No scooters, no bars, but certainly a great story. Just a story from Jeff Carlson. From Carlson. Okay, well, sounds great. Yeah, so in the meantime, um, we're going to throw a little bit of new music at you from Mount St. Helgens, a song called um, Everybody Caves, off their Real Concern record. Oh, nice. And it's used by permission, so... uh, This podcast and all others, including the music by Weeknights, is copyright by Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars. You hear that?